All right, so we are on section 6.2. So we've talked about, oh, I can't spell. That's better. So we've talked about parallelograms. What do we know so far up to this point about parallelograms? Somebody tell me something they know about parallelograms. All sides of parallel, or two All sides. sets of opposite parallels. Okay, two sets of opposite sides of parallel. That's good. That's by definition. Everybody's listen. So by definition, two pairs of opposite sides of parallel. Okay. Um, four sides, right? We know that. We know it's quadrilateral, right? Um, I think that's it. Isn't that all we know? Well, it's a polygon, but it's a specific polygon. Polygon would be a quadrilateral. And then more specific about that, it's a quadrilateral with two pairs of equal si or, uh, parallel sides. All right, so there is more to learn about a parallelogram, much more to learn. So let's, uh, let's talk about what we can learn about it. So let me draw a parallelogram. I mean, technically, that's a parallelogram, isn't it? But let me make it so it looks like what it usually looks like if we say parallelogram. But that's absolutely a parallelogram. Um, let's do this, and let's go, I don't know, negative 20. Here we go. So when they show you a parallelogram in a book, in a, in a geometry book, it usually looks something like this. It's right? a rhombus. It's not necessarily a rhombus. Okay? It's only a rhombus if what is true. What do we know about a rhombus? Uh, wait, I didn't it's a parallelogram is true, but it's a parallelogram with what? Uh, Say it. Four, four equal sides. Four. Okay, they all have four sides. Okay, all the quadrilaterals have four sides. Okay, but a rhombus would have four equal sides. This doesn't look like it has four equal sides, so we can't call it a rhombus. But if I told you that the side, if this was parallel to this one, and this left side was parallel to the right side, then I could say it's a parallelogram. Have I shown you the notation of a parallelogram? I don't think I've shown you that. So let's name it. Okay, we'll put some uh, some letters here where the uh, where the vertices are, right? Where they come together like this. So here's a symbol that we use. You know how we had symbols for all kinds of different stuff? We had symbol for an angle, right? We had symbols for triangles. What else? Like if you had a line segment, you just put a line over top. We had a symbol for a ray. We had a symbol for a line. All kinds of stuff, right? Well, we also have a symbol for a parallelogram. And it looks like a parallelogram. How about that? So it kind of looks like that. All right, we usually slant it to the right. No matter if your parallelogram is actually slanted to the left or not, we usually just do that right there. And still some talking. And um, we have to name it with four points. There's four, there's four corners to it, so we name it with four points. But you got to name it in a certain way, all right? So let's say, and it doesn't matter what letter you start with. It makes no difference, okay? But let's just start with A, just make it a little easier for us. Um, I could start with A, then I can go any direction. It doesn't matter. I could call it A. What do you think we would call it? A, D, C, B. We could call it that. We could, if we started at A, what else could we call it? A what? A, B, C, D. That's what I'm going to call it. A, B, C, D. Everybody with me so far? You don't have to start at A. You don't have to start like at the top left corner or anything like that. It doesn't matter. Let's say we started at C. How could we name this uh, parallelogram? If we started at C, we could go what? C, could you go CA? No, that's the one thing that you can't do. Everybody watch that? Okay, you cannot go CA. You can't go across. You got to go, I say, around the horn, all right? It's kind of a baseball term, but we got to go around it to the, um, to the ones that are right next to it. We can't go opposite, all right? So go ahead. Okay, all right, that's fine. I just thought you said A. Just a, uh, oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. So if you start at C, you could call it C, D, A, B, or you could call it C, B, A, D. Everybody got it? Okay, if I start at B, so there's a bunch of ways. Like how many ways could you name this parallelogram? Eight times, right, because if you start here, watch, if you start at A, I can name it two different ways beginning with A. If I start at B, I can name it two different ways, C and D. So that'd be eight different ways I could name this parallelogram, okay? And it doesn't matter how you name it, okay? As long as 
You can't go across, though. You can't call this A, C, B, D. Everybody got that? All right, enough of that. Um, I am just going to show you. I'm sure it's not going to bother you, but if it bothers you that I didn't prove this next theorem, you could always go back to the honors geometry, watch the video on that, and then I prove this next thing to you. But I think right now, I don't think you really care one way or the other if I prove it. So what I'm going to do, well, you can go back and watch the honors geometry video, okay? And, and I kind of prove it for you. So here's our first theorem, okay? On this section anyway, okay? So first theorem. And what it says is that the consecutive angles, I'm not going to write it down. You can write it down if you want. It's probably in the book. The consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. Now, what does that mean? The consecutive angles. So look at angle A. Which angle is supplementary to angle A? I'm sorry. I, I was getting ahead of myself. Consecutive. What's the consecutive angle? It's the one that's next to it. So it would be either what? B or it would be what? D. Would you agree with that? So what does it say about on a parallelogram? If this is a parallelogram, okay, what's true about the consecutive angles? They are, what did I just say? Supplementary. They're supplementary. Okay, which means, let's write this down, which means what? Angle A, if I can get my pen right, just put it down, I guess. Which angle A plus angle D, if they're supplementary, if the consecutive angles are supplementary, what does that mean? It means they add up to be what? 180. Not our first time we've talked about supplementary, is it? We've talked about it quite a bit this year. All right, so that shouldn't be anything new. So if I add it up, angle A and angle D, there's, they're going to be 180. What else is supplementary with angle A? Angle B. So I could say that angle B plus, I'm sorry, let's do it this way. Angle A plus angle B is also 180. Agreed? All right, by this theorem, okay? By this theorem, remember the consecutive angles are supplementary. First of all, this isn't really a proof, but it kind of is maybe a little bit. Remember, on a uh, parallelogram, these two sides are parallel, correct? This could be considered a transversal. Do you remember doing that back in the day? <laughs> back earlier this year. Earlier this year. Do you remember you had parallel lines cut by a transversal? Remember, you had alternate interior angles, consecutive angles. We had all that kind of stuff, right? Well, look at angle A and angle D. So this right here would be angle A. Everybody see that? There's my parallel lines. Here's my transversal. It doesn't go all the way through. It stops here. But just imagine that this parallel line goes this way, it goes this way, and AD crosses them. Everybody see that? So we've already said, this is kind of a proof. It's not exactly a proof, but it's kind of one. So what's true, if you have parallel lines cut by transversal, what's true about these? These are called consecutive angles, aren't they? Do you remember that? We had quizzes, we had tests, where you had to say, you had to name that they're called consecutive interior angles. We also had alternate interior angles, right? We also had corresponding angles. Remember all those? Okay, now it's coming back, okay? It's coming back again, because now it's part of a parallelogram and what did we know about consecutive interior angles when we had parallel lines cut by transversal? We know that they are supplementary. So that's why angle A and angle D are supplementary. Everybody see that? All right, it's the same for all of them. So you could, you could apply that idea to all of them. So A and B would be parallel as well because look, these two sides are also parallel. This is a transversal right here so this angle and this one must be supplementary too. Now watch this. This leads us up to our next uh, to our next theorem. So if this A and B are also supplementary, I'll tell you what, let's do it let's do it algebraically. So watch. A plus angle A plus angle D is 180. Angle A plus angle B is also 180. Agree? So what must be true about this? And this, if they're both equal to 180, they must both be equal to, now watch, no, 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 they're both equal to 180. This is 180, this is 180, okay? 
So what must be true about these two things I got in circles? They must be what? Equal to each other. Very good. Okay. Good job. Now watch. You understand that? Okay. If this first thing is equal to 180 and the second thing is equal to 180, then what must be true about the first thing and the second thing? They must equal what? Each other, right? Because they both equal 180. They both equal the same thing. So they both they both must equal each other. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to set them equal to each other. Okay. Let's see why. You're right. It is true. But let's see why. Let's do a little uh, algebra. It's kind of weird to subtract angles from both sides, but it's the same thing, right? This represents a number, represents a, a measure of an angle. Would you agree? And so is A. But watch this. Angle A is over here and angle A is over here. So algebraically, what do we do? I could subtract an angle A from here. And then what I do to one side, I got to what? Do to the other side. Now, they're the same thing, right? Angle A and angle A. So what happens when I subtract angle A from angle A? They cancel out. You remember that from algebra, right? Yeah. And they cancel out right here. So what must be true then? Angle what? Angle D must equal angle B. So if you come over here, angle D and angle B must be equal to each other. <laughs> and that makes sense even from the picture. Because look, if these two are supplementary, right? This has one arc. This has two arcs, right? And they're supplementary. And then if this has one arc and this one is supplementary to it, it's got to be the same as this one. You hear what I just said? All right. And so, of course, and if you just take it by its um, conclusion, what else would equal? Angle C would be the same as A. Because, again, these two are supplementary, right? So if this has got two arcs, then this must be the same one as this. If you wanted to put some numbers in there just to make it a little easier, because sometimes I can see in, on your faces that so this is a little bit weird. So, I don't know. Let's make one up. Let's say this is 60. Is that all right? That's 60 degrees. So with the numbers, it might make it a little easier for you to see. So if this is 60 degrees, what's true about these two angles right here? They are, give me the geometry word. According to the theorem, the consecutive angles are what to each other? I should have written the theorem down, okay? They're supplementary. So if this is 60, what does this have to be? 120. How'd you get 120? Did you just pick it out of the blue? Yes. You took it away from what? Took 60 away from 180. You agree that they're supplementary? Because they add up to 180, right? If this is 60, this has to be 120, right? Now look at this. These two right here are supplementary. So if this is 120, what's this have to be? This has got to be 60. Agreed? These two right here are supplementary. So if this is 60, this has got to be what? 120. So what do we have? We got the opposite angles are what to each other? Equal to each other. Exactly right. Okay? Everybody see that? That's kind of a proof. We didn't really do a formal proof. But that's basically what a proof is. We kind of showed, we kind of proved that these are supplementary. Or, the, or that these are equal to each other, I should say. Okay? Everybody with me on that? All right, so that's kind of easy. So that's something that's really important to understand. Um, let me see. Opposite angle is... Yeah, that's good enough for that. All right, I think we're good with that. Let's go to a um, let's go to another figure here. It's still a parallelogram, but it's a specific type of parallelogram, and right there. Now it looks like a what? But if all I did was just drew that thing for you right there, could you say 100% that that's a rectangle? It could be 89.999 degrees, okay? So we don't know exactly that it's a uh, rectangle unless they tell you some stuff, all right? Now watch this. What did we learn yesterday about a rectangle? We said a rectangle is a quadrilateral with what? Four what? Well, all quadrilaterals have four sides, but a rectangle. It's got four what? Oh. Right angles. It's got four right angles. Exactly right. But watch this. We have a little theorem. They actually call it a corollary. 
I'll write that word down. Have we mentioned that before? Let's spell it right. Corollary. Yep. A corollary just means kind of like an offshoot of a theorem. It's like a little baby theorem. Okay. It has to do with the last theorem that we talked about. You understand what that means? It, it's the same thing as a theorem. It's just a rule. It's just a something that we learn in geometry, but they call it a corollary. The corollary says this. It says if a um, parallelogram, so they're telling you that this is a parallelogram, all right? If a parallelogram has one right angle, just one, okay? So this is the only angle that I know on this parallelogram, and I know it's a right angle. Then it must have four right angles, so it must be a what? A rectangle. So today, yesterday we had to we had to show all four. Today I can say because of that last theorem that we just did, I can say that if a parallelogram has one right angle, then all four of them are going to be right angles. Let's see why. Because if this is ninety, what's true about these two angles right here? They are what to each other? They're supplementary to each other. What's one eighty minus ninety? It's ninety. So that has to be ninety. What do we know about a par? Again, this is a parallelogram. What do we know about the opposite angles of a parallelogram? They're equal to each other. Okay, so if this is 90, then that's got to be 90. And they're supplementary. Now what else? This right here is 90, so guess what's true about this? So just knowing that it's a parallelogram and knowing that you have one right angle, that automatically tells us that all four of those angles are right angles. You with me on that? All right, so if you got four right angles, what kind of... Uh, what kind of a specific object is this? It's a rectangle. Okay, so this is a rectangle. Started off knowing it was just a parallelogram with one right angle. And from that, from the theorem that we learned earlier, right, that's why it's called a corollary because it has to do with that. And there we go. I'll tell you, that's good enough for that one. All right, everybody with me? So if you just know you have one right angle, and you got, and it's a parallelogram. You got to know it's a parallelogram. If it's a parallelogram, then it's a rectangle. Okay, let's do another one. Let's draw another uh, parallelogram. I'll make this slant a little different. Transform shear. We'll go positive twenty degrees. There we go. All right. So here's a basic look at parallelogram. So I know it's a parallelogram. I'm not going to show you a, um, a proof or anything for this. I'm just going to tell you what it is. Here's another thing that we know about a parallelogram. Okay, first of all, by definition, you know the opposite sides are parallel to each other. Okay? And then today, what did we learn? We learned that the consecutive angles are supplementary, right? The ones that are next to each other, this one and this one, this one and this one, and so forth. And we also know that the opposite angles are what to each other? The opposite angles. They're equal to each other. Okay? So the opposite angles are equal to each other. Remember that? Anybody paying attention? If you can see your faces now. <laughs> it looks like I'm killing you. I know. i got one person who's paying attention. Right. So anyway. So we know a bunch of things so far about this parallelogram. We know that both sides are parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. We know the angles, the consecutive angles, are, are uh, supplementary. We also know the opposite angles are equal to each other. Here's one more thing that we know, but it doesn't have anything to do with the angles. And let's just look at it and just kind of make a wild guess. It's probably not that wild, but what do you think might be true about the lengths of the opposite sides? What about this length right here and this length right here? What do they look like they possibly are? Nobody's playing along here? Look at this length right here, and look at this length right here. Okay, what about the length of them? They're equal to each other. Exactly right. Okay, now I don't have a proof for this, um, but we're just going to believe them, okay? So this is the theorem. It can be proven, but right now I'm just showing you. Uh, you probably use, um, you probably like split it from here to here, and you probably use what you know about congruent triangles, and if you these would be corresponding sides, so these two sides would be equal to each other, all right? So I'm not going to worry too much in this class anyway about um, proving that that's true. So what do you think is true about the other two sides? They're equal as well, all right? So there you go. That's another theorem. The theorem says this. It says the opposite sides 
of a parallelogram are congruent or equal, okay? So the opposite sides. Does that mean all four sides are always congruent on a parallelogram? No. Okay. Now, if that parallelogram happened to be a what? Then all four sides would be equal. Or a more general would be a rhombus, right? So if this was a rhombus, then all four sides are equal. But it's not a rhombus. This one's definitely longer than this side right here. But the opposite sides will be equal to each other. Okay? Everybody with me? We'll do an example here in a minute. Now, here's something else that's true about a parallelogram. I hope you're writing all this down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect from this corner to this corner. Do you remember what we call that when I go from one corner to another? did a bunch of that yesterday. Starts with a D. A what? Diagonal. Yes, it's a diagonal. Okay, so that's a diagonal. I'm going to draw another diagonal from this corner right here. Now, there's something that's true about these two diagonals. Now, you might think that they're exactly equal to each other, but they're not. Okay? Everybody see that? They're not necessarily, should say that, they're not necessarily equal to each other. This one right here looks a little shorter than that one right there. Okay? So they're not equal to each other, but they do something. They bisect each other is what they do. So that means that this and this are equal to each other, and this one right here and this one right here are equal to each other. Now, don't get confused because of the tick marks. The one and the one doesn't mean that it's the same as these two up here, okay? Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to put a million tick marks on it, okay? So this is a pink tick mark. That's a white one. doesn't mean they're the same. But these two are the same. So if I told you that this was five, what would be this whole, di whole entire diagonal? Let's call it A, B, C, D again. Mm -hmm. If I told you that this was five, let's call this M for midpoint. What if AM was 5? What would AC be equal to? Ten. Right, it'd be 10. Because if this and this are the same, this would be 5. This would be 5. What's AC? The whole thing. That would be 10. You see what they're going to do? But they're not always going to make it that easy. They're going to... Um, actually, on this next example, they kind of do. But um, what do you think they're possibly going to do? They'll make this like what? Like X plus 2 and this is like 3x minus 1 or something like that, right? And then what do you do? You set them equal to each other, right? You solve for x, you plug it back in. We've been doing that a lot this year, haven't we? Yeah, and that's what geometry is about. It really is. It's, it's all about taking the picture and then uh, if they get some algebra on there, setting stuff equal or adding stuff up, equaling something else, right? We've been doing that pretty much all year. So that's what they're eventually going to get to. All right, so you just have to understand that the diagonals bisect each other, which means this little part from here to here is the same as this little part from here to here. Okay, same thing with over here. Does it mean that AM and DM are the same? What do you think? No, because remember, the lengths of the diagonals themselves are not necessarily the same. Everybody got that? Okay, so just because this is 5 and this is 5 does not mean that that's 5 right there. All right, enough of that. Let's do another one. Let's do an example. I'll tell you what, let's copy that. That's all right. I'd rather have you sleeping than being all rowdy, so I'll take it. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, let's just... I just want this to look like um, the one in the book. Oops, it's not what I wanted. Let's try that again. Transform. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. All right. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger because we're going to write a lot of stuff inside of here. So this is an example. It's example one of chapter six two. Um, yeah, I'll just keep it on white. So I'm going to draw some diagonals. There's one diagonal, and here's another diagonal. 
and uh, let's put some letters in here. They start at A on the, down here. This should look like the one in the book. I'm just looking at my notes, but I'm pretty sure I made it look like the one in the book. All right, and let's go to yellow now. So they give you this side right, or this little part right there is 5.8. Now, what is 5.8? Is it from here all the way down? Where is it? If I just put it right there. It's from B to E. Right, okay, so B, E is 5.8. Well, actually, you know what I'm going to have to do? Because I think I might have put some extra stuff on my notes. Let me take a look at this. I just want to see what they do in the book. Yeah, they don't give you that. It's 5.8. That's one of the things you're going to have to find. So I kind of gave away a little bit of the answer, but that's okay. That's all right. You'll be fine. Down the bottom is 8. Okay, this little bit right here is 4.2. Uh, this angle up here is 63 degrees. And this one is 41 degrees. Let's see, they tell, oh, they tell you another thing. This is 6.3. And I think that's everything that they give you. Yeah. So they're going to ask you a bunch of questions about this. Let's just slide this up just a little bit. Give me a little bit of room down here. I probably drew this too big. Uh, let's make this white. All right. So A. You want to find what DC is equal to. You want to find what EC is equal to. Um, let's come over here. Part C, you want to find ED. Some of these are real easy. Just look at it and you can just tell. But some you have to do maybe a little bit of work. Now you got to find the angle DAB. And then um, part E, you got to find angle ADC, ADC, and part F is the last part of this, is DAC, angle DAC. This is very, very uh, similar to something that you would do on the homeworks and obviously what you would do on the quizzes, okay? Let's go in order. Let's do DC. All right, so come over here. Where's DC? It's right here, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I'll put the answers in a different color. All right, so let's find DC. It's that one right there. Just by looking at it, I should be able to tell you what DC is without doing any math at all. 6.3, that's right. How'd you get 6.3? Because it's opposite the, it's equal to the other opposite side. Everybody see that? It's easy, right? Remember, the opposite sides are equal. So if that's 6.3, then this is 6.3. So that's DC. Make sense? Yeah, everybody can get that part, right? Except for the ones with their heads down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them. Wow. Six ideas. Goodness gracious. Well, that's their problem. All right, let's find EC. EC is this one right here. Everybody look at it. This is another one where you should just be able to look at it and write down the answer. 4.2, that's right, because remember, this is being bisected, isn't it? So this little bit right here and this little bit right here are exactly the same. This is 4.2, so this has got to be 4.2. That's easy. Line segment ED, we're finding the length. That's why they don't put a little line segment over top of it. They find the length of ED. Where's ED? It's this one right here. Hmm. Oh, you know what? They give you more information that I didn't write down. I was going to say, there's no way you can find that. Um, but they give you some information. So let me... Um, let me write that down. I knew we were missing something. They don't draw it. They actually just write it. They say BD is equal to 11.6, and they say that angle ABC is equal to 72 degrees. Good thing I said that. Now we might be able to do it. Look what they tell you. They tell you the BD. Where's BD? It's from here all the way down to here. They say that's 11.6. But on part C, they're asking for ED, just this little bit right there. Remember, the whole thing is 11.6. So how do we find, you might not be able to do the math in your head, you divide it by two. That's right. You guys watching? So BD is 11.6 and ED is half of 11.6 and half of 11.6 is 5.8. Okay, so you had to do a little math with that. 
The math wasn't hard. The math was just dividing a number by 2. So that's what ED is. It's 5.8. Everybody see that? Remember, because it's being bisected. If it's being bisected, it splits that diagonal into two equal parts. All right, let's do the angles now. Angle DAB. Where's DAB? Let's draw it. DAB. That's this whole big old angle right here. Okay? Well, remember what they give you. They give you angle ABC, didn't they? Yeah. Okay? So they tell you, watch this. They tell you this big old angle, I'll put two arcs around it. They tell you right here that angle ABC is 72 degrees. Okay? So what's true about, see this one with two arcs and this big one right here with one arc? What's true about them both? Because they told you. Because they told you. Okay? So if this is 72, how do we find this one right here? They're supplementary, so you take it away from 180. So you could do the math somewhere. 180 minus 72, what is that? 108? There you go. All right. And how did I know this was 72? They told me. Okay, they didn't write it on the picture. Okay, as you can see, it could get kind of sloppy, couldn't it? You know, by writing all that stuff on the picture. That's why they wrote it off to the side here. Okay? So that whole thing's 72. So this one right here is going to be 180 minus 72, which is 108. We got two more. Let's do ADC. Where's ADC? This one's super easy. Because look, ADC is this angle right there. There's A, there's D, there's C. Why did I put two arcs around it? Because it's equal to the opposite angle, right? The opposite angle we just figured, or they told us was 72. So without doing any math at all, what's this big old angle D down here? is just 72 degrees. So really, we've only had to do math twice, right? We had to go 11.6 divided by 2, and then we went 180 minus 72 to get that one. What about DAC? Where's that? DAC. I'll tell you what, let's do that in a different color. Because I got a lot of arcs floating around here. We'll just put that in blue. Everybody with me? Now, remember what the whole thing is. The whole thing is how much? What do you think? Okay. Where did you get... The, explain how you did that. This 72 right here? Okay. This one right here? Yeah. yeah. Well, but where's the triangle, though? This whole thing is not part of one triangle, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. It's part of this triangle right here. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. I was, seeing, I was looking at it differently. I was going to go alternate interior angles, because if this is 63, then that's 63. Okay. Do you see that? Just watch, just watch, just watch. Bryce, stop, stop my flow. All right? Why? This is 63, then this has got to be 63. Agreed? And what was that whole thing right here? Remember, it was 108. So I could go 108 minus 63. That's one way of doing it. But your way is good, too, because um, I'm looking at this triangle ABC. See this big old triangle right here from A to B to C? That's got a 72 degrees, so this is 72 degrees right here. This is 63, so I could add these two up, take it away from 180, right? And then I got this blue angle right here. Either way you do it, you should get the same thing, and you get 45 degrees. I kind of like my way. Do you understand that this is 63? This has to be 63 as well, because I got parallel lines cut by transversal. These are actually alternate interior angles. You see that? I knew that this was 108, so I just go 108 minus 63, and that's 45. That might be a little bit easier for people to see, but you're exactly right. You did it fine, right? I'm looking at this big triangle. I know this is 72. I know this is 63. I add them up, take them away from 180, and I get 45. So either way would work. So I'll put that down right there. Okay? So that's the kind of stuff 
they're, they're going to have you do. Let's do, um, we got like three minutes. I don't know if we'll be able to finish this, but at least we'll set it up. Okay. Um, let's. Hold on. Oops, not working. Why isn't it working? I don't know. I don't know. What am I doing? What's going on? Is that what he wants us to do? All right. Um, why isn't it? It's just stuck. <laughs> it won't go away. Oh, well. Yeah. I guess that's from on high. So, um... So here's the deal. We don't have class tomorrow. Um, let's do this. I'm going to make it audible here. You know our uh, lesson plan thing? Instead of do part B of 6-1, let's stick with that. I can't write it down because, oh, there it goes. Now I can write stuff. Okay. But so even though we taught 6-2 today, I'm just going to give you the second part of 6-1. Uh, what is it? 19 to 34. Oops. Well, that's their problem. So we're going to do 6-1-B, and we're going to do page 253, and we're going to do 19 to 34. So even though I taught 6-2 today, since we're not going to have class tomorrow, I just want to make sure I got through a lesson. All right, so here's your homework. 61B, page 253, it's 19 to 34. Everybody got it? So we kind of jumped around a little bit with our lesson plan, but it's on your lesson plan. You can go look at it. It's actually for Tuesday, all right? And then um, you should be able to figure it out.